Well, well, welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna dive into Lightroom. We're gonna look at the latest update and all of the exciting things that are contained within. There's a lot of masking stuff, which as you know, I'm a huge fan of. We've got some content aware removal stuff in there as well. Let's dive in because of course, join me on this wonderful Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, each and every Tuesday we bring you a brand new fresh photography tutorial. This week, like I say, it's Lightroom time. Let's talk about the update. Let's get into it because I, I spoke all about it in the intro. We all know what we're doing. Let's dive in. So we're in Lightroom Classic. I've got a few different photos we're going to use to kind of show off the new update and show exactly what it can do. But first things first, before we get into that, let me show you a couple of little things that they've changed. First of all, up on the top right here, we have a slightly different looking toolbar. So where we've still got the masking panel, you know, healing, cropping, stuff like that, we now have this additional one called Edit. It. And this essentially just changes things very slightly rather than going, let's say, into cropping, cropping your photo and then clicking done. Now we're just in two different panels. We're in the edit panel with all the normal sliders that you're familiar with. And then, of course, we go into cropping where we can actually crop the photo and that's a different panel. We can go to healing. That's a different panel again. And we go back to edit. So it kind of just streamlines that into having these different panels that you move between, which I think probably makes sense, to be honest. It's not a massive part of the update, but it's worth mentioning because we are going to be looking at quite a few bits here within this update. So let's dive into a few different things. The main part of this update is within masking and healing, but we also see a few things over here with the presets, which we will get into a little bit later on in the video. So first up, let's click into the masking panel and you can see this has changed slightly. This looks different immediately. We now have subject, sky and background as things that we can select immediately. And then separately from that, we have objects. And then down here, you can see Lightroom has found all of the people within this photo. So in this case, it's just the one person, but if we mouse over that there, you can see it's masked her out really, really nicely. And we're gonna go into that in more detail in a second. So the new parts here, we can now actually mask out the background with one click. So let's go ahead and click that. Lightroom will just find out where the background is, mask it out for us, there we go, perfect. And I could actually bring that down a bit, the exposure, maybe the highlights, maybe even something like the saturation. Let's bring that down a little bit as well. And maybe even just bump that contrast up a little bit as well. That's the background immediately taken care of. You know, that was already a way you could do it. You could select the subject and then just reverse the mask. But this is a nice thing to have in there, quality of life. I often want to darken the background slightly from my subject. So this is a really nice way of doing that. Now, of course, we can still do things like create a new mask around the subject, which would select our subject here. But we can also go in and actually select people. So if we click select people there, you can see Lightroom has picked out all of the people in the photo. Now, obviously, there's only one person here. Turns out I don't have a lot of photos with multiple people in. But I will show you this photo because it works just as well, I think. This photo, of course, is just the one person, but there's enough of a reflection there to make it almost seem like there might be two. So if we go into the masking panel, you'll see Lightroom is detecting the people and it has detected two people there. It's masked them out separately, so person two, we've got over here on the right, person one on the left. I think it just masked them left to right, that's how it numbers them. But it means we can go in, we can click person two, and there's a lot that we can do here. It doesn't just mask it like with the subject masking, this goes in a little bit deeper. So we can mask out the entire person or we can mask out different parts of our subject. So the face, skin, for example, let's go iris and pupil, let's go lips. And you can see down here, there's another tick box that says create three separate masks. Now that means that they're all going onto their own layers, which we can edit individually. But if you look, when we mouse over any part of this, you can see which part it's actually masking. So for example, we could do the, just the whites of the eyes, just the iris and the pupil the teeth, if we wanted to whiten that, the hair, body skin, face skin, it's super, super detailed. And look how much of a good job it's doing. So if I click on, uh, if I scroll down here and click create mask, we now have three masks on this photo. The face skin, which I can now adjust. I could lighten that if I want to, I could darken it. I could add some warmth to it, whatever I want. I mean, I don't really need to in this photo, but you know, you could do. You can come in here to the iris and pupil. Again, I could brighten that. I could add some clarity, maybe add some saturation. And then I could come up here to the lips and maybe I want to brighten those a touch as well. Maybe I want to add some saturation to those. 
And it's a really easy way of doing a lot of portrait editing pretty quickly, pretty efficiently, and very effectively. It really does make a huge difference to my workflow for sure. You know, if I just wanna go in and give a little bit of something extra for the eyes, you can do that extremely quickly. You don't really have to go into Photoshop for a lot of the stuff that I would normally go in there for. Now, if I just bring us back to this photo, we can look at some of these presets as well, because there's some of the stuff that's already available as a preset essentially for your photo. So these are the adaptive presets. We've seen these before with things like adaptive subject, adaptive sky. So for example, the adaptive subject, this is not new, but I can come over here to pop and it's actually gonna mask out our subject and then actually just up the exposure a little bit, up a little bit of clarity. But we now have these adaptive portrait settings as well. So for example, I can come in here to enhance portrait. It's gonna mask out parts of her and make some slight adjustments. So for example, soften the skin a little bit, but we can also come in here to like, for example, enhance eyes, and that's gonna help brighten those eyes a little bit. And we're gonna see all these masks pop up which are then making changes to the photo. So even if you didn't want to go in and do it manually, you can just set these up and then you can still go into these masks and make any changes you want. Let's say that you set in the enhanced eyes, Lightroom's gonna do its thing. You can then go into that mask, the iris and pupil mask here or the eye mask, and you can make some changes from there, right? It's a really, really useful workflow. And if you need to get through quite a few images, reasonably quickly, I really think this is gonna make a big difference to the workflow. I think for me, editing portraits, this is already, even in the short space of time I've had this update, this has already made a nice bit of difference. But it's not all about portraits. We also have this new setting for the masking called object. So let's go ahead on this photo here, click on the masking panel. Obviously I've already done some edits to this photo, but if we go create new mask and we hit objects, we can now mask out anything in the photo. And this is great for anything that's not a person or an obvious subject. This photo would probably work fine actually with just using the subject, but if you had multiple things in the shot and you wanted to mask out one specific thing, this is a very easy way of doing that. So we have two ways of masking out an object in our photo. We can either use a brush or we can use a rectangle kind of selecting tool. Let's do both. Let's select the brush. So that's just here. We can change the size by using the slider or we can use the scroll wheel on the mouse. But if I just come in here and just brush over this bird. So I'm not being super exact. I'm going kind of around the edge and then I'm just gonna fill it in. You can see I'm, yeah, I'm going well outside the bird here. Not a problem. At least I hope not. Uh, there we go, right? And if I let go, what's gonna happen is Lightroom is gonna detect the object, which in this case is a bird, and it's gonna mask it out. And you can see it's done a basically perfect job of that. And we could then make any adjustments to this bird that we want. So let's go ahead and create a new mask. We're gonna click objects here. We're gonna use the rectangle tool this time. Let's just click and drag the rectangle over the bird. I might've been a bit close there but let's see what happens. Let's let go. And you see Lightroom is gonna perfectly mask out that bird. It's a really useful tool. And I think actually this might not immediately seem as obviously useful as the portrait tool, but I think that actually for anything that isn't a portrait, there's a lot that you could do with this. You know, whether you wanna mask out something in the background, which you want to brighten or darken, or whether you wanna mask out multiple different objects. You know, if I go into a different photo, you know, this photo here, for example, if I go ahead and click the mask, let's create a new mask object. Let's go for the rectangle tool. It'd be so easy, for example, to mask out this blue battery. I just draw the rectangle around it. There we go, Lightroom masks it out. Let's create another mask objects. Let's actually mask out this over here, the charger and Lightroom has masked it pretty much perfectly there, so I could brighten that if I wanted to, I could darken it. Really, really easy. If you do product photography, food photography, or really anything, I mean, landscape, you could mask out trees, individual trees, you could mask out things in the background of your landscape in the foreground. Very, very easy to add these masks, and you could obviously do all this sort of stuff manually with things like brush tools and stuff like that, but this just makes it a million times easier. And I really like that, it's a good quality of life update. So let's jump into the next part of this update, which is of course all to do with the healing panel. Let's jump into the healing panel here. We've still got our healing tool, our clone tool, but now we have this content aware remove tool. Now, I'll be completely honest with you, my personal experience of this so far has been that it's not as useful as perhaps I would like. I actually got very excited about this one. I thought it was gonna change my workflow from having to go into Photoshop quite a lot to actually remove things from the photos properly. You know, the, the healing tool is is very useful in certain situations, but it would be great to have that power that you have in Photoshop 
within Lightroom. And this is definitely a step in the right direction. I just personally haven't found it as useful, but let's see what it can do. Let's click on this here, for example, let's get rid of this battery here. So we just can adjust the actual brush size here again, using the mouse scroll wheel. Let's just click and drag over the battery and of course the shadow as well. Let's just make sure we've got all of that there. There we go. And if I let go, it's going to try and work out what to do to actually remove that. I won't lie to you, it's actually done a pretty good job. If I come over to the edit panel so we can see, it's it's not a bad job, is it? But it's not perhaps as ideal as we might have liked. There's a little bit of darkness around the edge. Now, maybe I could actually move this slightly. Maybe that's gonna fix that, let's see. Again, it's done It's done a pretty good job. Now I can change things manually a little bit. So you might see here it says control and drag on the photo, select a custom source. So I can hit control on my keyboard and then just draw a rectangle a bit like that to create a custom source for it to replace that part of the image. But as you can see, it's still not perfect, is it? It's still not ideal. And I probably would end up going into Photoshop to actually try and fix that manually. If we take a look at another photo, so I've got this one here. If we want to remove some of these ducks over here, let's just go ahead and try that again. So I'll just make it reasonably small, the brush, so we're not doing too much. I'll just mouse over that duck. Let's see what it does. It's not a bad job, but it's just not as good as I could get it done on Photoshop. So it's a useful thing maybe to have, and for certain situations, it might be better than the healing tool. But for me, it's not quite there yet, but it's great to see it in Lightroom, right? I never thought we'd see this. So it's really, really good to see this in Lightroom. And hopefully, you know, with further updates, this is just gonna get better and better. And eventually we'll get to a point where it is it is as good maybe as Photoshop. And that's pretty much it. They're the big parts of this update. Very exciting stuff with the masking. I think that's incredibly useful. And this masking stuff is getting really, really good. The AI stuff that they use to actually work this stuff out, fantastic, really, really useful and that excites me a lot. We have all kinds of Lightroom tutorials, so I'll pop a link down in the description to all the Tutorial Tuesdays out there, but we have loads and loads of Lightroom stuff, including getting started with Lightroom Classic if you are completely new to Lightroom and you wanna get started to set everything up and get going. Absolutely, we've got a great tutorial for you and loads of other stuff as well, from sort of beginner all the way to advanced stuff. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I will, of course, see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.